Hey, this is Mad Movie Mark with a Mad Movie Mark movie review. Thank you for joining me as I review the 2004 Japanese anime mind game. Hey, thanks. I love the energy and I love the spunk. I'm reviewing every movie that has 100% fresh brain on Rotten Tomatoes. I'm giving them all a score of 1 to 10. After I watch them and score them all, I will rank them from worst to best. I started in the 1920s silent movie era, and now I am at 2004 with Mind Game. This movie has a 100% fresh rating from the critics, and a 93% fresh rating from the audience. And just as my thumbnail would suggest, I'm a bit of an anime newbie, or at least I would consider myself that. I've seen a handful of Miyazaki movies. I've seen Perfect Blue, Paprika, Only Yesterday, and Grave of the Fireflies, and that is about it. However, if anime movies are like this movie, then I want to watch all of them, because this movie is one of the deepest movies I've ever seen in my life. It is thought-provoking, it is heartbreaking, it is heartwarming, it is moving, it is everything that you could want in a movie, and it even has this really particular art style, which I've never seen before, where they kind of have the way the character is drawn normally, but then they show, in some scenes, a face of a character that almost looks like what the actor's face would look like. Now they do this a lot more in the beginning of the movie, and it kind of stops as the movie gets like towards the end, they stop doing this. I think it's basically after um, there's this part in the movie where one of the main character dies, and I think they really stopped doing the realistic face thing towards that period, but the art style at first, I thought it was comical. I thought it was funny, but as I was, as the movie went on, um, it just, it became amazing, and I really started believing in it, and I really enjoyed it quite a bit. It's so different, and it's not different like Beowulf, where it's just terrible CGI. It, it's different where uh, it makes sense, and it really uh, gives the character kind of a uh, feeling like you know them, because you almost see the actor's face as it's supposed to look. Um, I really loved the way the art was in this movie. Some people may be uh, detracted by it, some people might not like it, but I thought it was it was fantastic and very well done. So essentially this movie follows a character named Nishi. Nishi is a uh, male, he is 20 years old, and he is non-educated and not employed. But he wishes to one day become a comic book artist. That is his dream. One day he meets his childhood crush named Mayan, and um, there's a part in this movie very early on where he goes through a flashback of him and Mayan in school and these different feelings of love that he had for her and how he had a hard time expressing those feelings because he really doesn't have that great of an opinion about himself. Um, and he was afraid of her because he thought that she was so uh, beautiful and um, he thought that she was the most amazing person he'd ever met. And these flashbacks that they're having are so moving. あいまいな態度でみょんちゃんの気を引こうとしていただけ。誰かが自然と次の展開に運んでくれるのを待っていただけ。西君、あんた何が欲しい自分は誰とも戦わんと傷つくことなく、うちの方からあんたの胸に
when I was younger, I had that what if in my head. Um, now I'm happily married with, with a child. Uh, but these are the kind of feelings you go through. And I thought they depicted this very well in the beginning of the movie. I thought it was so moving and so touching and um, just handled beautifully. It's a very beautiful opening to the movie. Um, so he ends up meeting his crush. They end up going, or he meets her one day at a restaurant. I think it's like a restaurant or a diner um, where her father and her sister... I believe her name is Jan, is there as well. Um, and joining them is her fiancé named Ryo. Now, of course, Nishi, uh, he eventually expresses his love to Mayan and says, please don't marry Ryo because I love you. I want to be with you. You're the person um, that I want to be with the rest of my life. Um, she still is going to go through with this engagement with Ryo, but it's a big moment for him because he finally gets to express his feelings. Now, while they're at this diner, two members of the Yakuza walk in and they're looking for Mayan's uh, father because I think he ended up stealing one of the Yakuza's girlfriends and he ran away with her to like another country or on a vacation or something. So he's there waiting for her. He's got like a football outfit on too. So I think he's like um, in, in some sort of football team where they are, if I'm remembering right. Um, and they end up waiting around for a while. And the more this Yakuza football player guy waits around, the more angry he gets and the more things start stewing up inside of him. So he decides that he's going to attack Mayan, um, that he's going to try to rape her. Now, Ryo immediately steps up and tries to defend her, and he ends up getting killed by this Yakuza member. And while she's on the floor and this event is about to happen, she's uh, yelling for Nishi because she wants... Uh, Nishi to save her. Now, Nishi's kind of balled up in a cowardice ball on the floor, and um, but he does eventually get the nerve to try to save her, uh, but before he can do it, he is killed by the Yakuza, and uh, his spirit ends up going up to heaven. Um, this heaven scene is unlike any heaven scene I've ever seen before. It's a, I guess it's almost like a purgatory slash heaven where he's in a state of purgatory, but God is there as well. So um, God keeps changing his forms over and over again. I think he says at some point that he is whatever um, Nishi thinks he is. And he tells Nishi that, first of all, he like makes Nishi watch his death over and over again. And he tells Nishi that he only created him for his enjoyment and for his amusement. And um, he asks Nishi to go into this red portal where he will disappear forever. Um, but Nishi sees an out. He sees that there's a light going off in the other way, and he runs towards that light because he wants to come back to life. While he's doing that, God is so impressed at his will to live and his will to go back that he allows him to do it. So Nishi goes back into the real world, and he's able to turn the tables on the Yakuza, and he ends up killing the Yakuza um, guy before he can kill him. Uh, he then takes Jan and Mayan into his car, and they start racing away while other Yakuza's are chasing them. They end up um, getting to this point where it's a bit of a dead end, and they decide he decides to recklessly drive the car into an ocean off a bridge. And when he drives the car into the ocean, the car he is they're all swallowed by a whale. Now, when they get into the whale's body, they meet a elderly gentleman who also says he was a member of the Yakuza, and he's been inside this well for 30 years. Um, at this point, they pretty much, they try to escape the whale, but it's impossible because every time they try to, the whale devours like all this water and they end up capsizing, they end up almost drowning. Um, they start realizing uh, after a while, that they may never get out of this well's body, and that they could also 
lived there for 30 years like this old guy has done. This old guy is very hospitable. He, like, cooks for them. I thought that there was going to be some sort of, like, double dealing, he's going to turn the tables on them type of thing. I think I'm always waiting for, like, something, like, the, the guy to be a bad guy. But he's not. He, like, feeds them. He gives them everything they need, basically, to live a life inside this whale. Um... And at, at, towards the end of the movie, right when they're kind of at rock bottom, the whale stops eating and the older gentleman says, oh, I think the, the whale is dying. So if we want to get out, we're going to have to do it soon. Otherwise, it's never going to happen. So they end up building a boat and they end up actually getting out of the whale. And when they get out of the whale, there's like a montage of their life. And I, it's a little confusing what actually is going on in this montage. I think that it's like possible um, futures that each of these characters can have with one another now that they've finally been able to escape and have a future. Um, that's what I thought it was, and, then, and that's the end of the movie. Um, this movie is incredibly beautiful. The story is, is amazing. It's a story that I've never, uh, I don't think I've encountered before. Um, like I said, the art is absolutely fantastic. It's just, it's hard to explain in words without like showing the movie to you, but it's just such a, mo a moving and emotional movie uh, in the way the story is told. And uh, it's just, it's beautiful. It's an incredibly beautiful movie, but it is a mind game. I think the mind game comes in the beginning with the, the characters' faces, with the whole going to heaven thing and then escaping and coming back to life. I still find it odd that he was able to come back to life and then... Um, he was able to, like, continue to live without any, like, repercussions. Like, God is just going to let you enter the world um, and just, like, everything's fine after that. Uh, I, I found that to be a little weird. I also thought that this was going to be a movie because after he after he dies and enters the world, uh, he becomes very reckless. He, and he just kind of, like, lives for the day where he, he thinks that every day could be his last type of thing. And... I thought that he was going to be so reckless that he was going to keep dying and keep having to come back from heaven. And um, I, I thought that was a really nice um, pl plot point of the movie. And after he goes to heaven the first time, they never introduce it back into the movie. And I was hoping that they would re revisit that and that they would just continue it as a plot point. But they don't. But I think all in all, this movie is about kind of um, living your best life, living um, like there's no tomorrow type of thing, um, especially in the beginning of the movie where he has a hard time talking to the girl and telling the girl how he really feels. I think this movie is about taking those chances because you never know when you're going to have that chance again. Um, he was just lucky in that he met this girl later on in his life, but she was, uh, she was engaged. So you never know when you're going to have that chance in life again to seize that opportunity. And I, I think that's essentially what this movie is about is seeing the opportunities that you have, not being worried about um, what someone's going to think about you, not being worried about like the negative outcomes that could come from this, but to only think, but you know, to actually go and do it, to take those chances in life. Um, and the movie did such a, great job of it. Uh, the voice acting is fantastic. Like I said, the art is amazing. Um, the story, the script is is gold. Uh, I This is probably one of my favorite animes of all time, um, now that I've seen it. Uh, Princess Mononoke is probably still up there pretty high. I really loved Perfect Blue as well, but this is definitely up there. Uh, I give it a 9.5 out of 10. Thank you. I hope you have a great day.